Hi, this is Nick Poltridge from the South Australian Government Department of Primary Industries and Regions. Today we're at Woodena on the Upper Air Peninsula of South Australia visiting a red meat and wool growth program focus farm belonging to the Lim family. We'll be looking at the different technologies the Lims are using in their management of their merino enterprise. We'll be looking at the benefits the technology has brought, the labour efficiencies it brings, and the way that technology supports management on the property. The story with data and our um, sheep enterprise and individual sheep uh, management, I guess, started a long time ago with um, my late father. He took the view that with individual uh, animal um, identification, we could improve fleece weight at the time. That was the, the big thing. And so he rattled each sheep with a number and then put them through the shed um, and recorded um, fleece weights. And using that one single piece of data, um, he, he did manage to increase fle fleece weight quite significantly, but he was only measuring one variable. Although he made fast genetic gain uh, or he diminished other areas of the sheep in the same process. Since then, we've moved on to ear tags with individual numbers on them that we were reading, and we probably did that for 10 years. Um, so that required reading the animal three times because we did the three different variables of the body weight, fleece weight, and a side sample. So that was a lot of manual labor and a lot of <laughs> wrong data because you can easily misread a tag. So. And that the progression from there was EID that we can use a wand or a panel reader to um, to read, and that allowed us to be a lot more accurate and labour saving. I guess the latest um, or the most recent incursion of what we're doing with individual animals is um, using the RFID tag to um, measure three different variables: so the body weight, fleece weight, and the animal's micron. An index is created and ranks the hoggets from um, the top to the bottom and that allows us to select the genetically superior animals each year. So we're using the combi clamp today to start the process of fleece weighing and, um, and body weighing the poggets for, for classing. So I take a, a hand width from the pin bone down towards the front hock and I put a blue rattle on that spot just like that and then uh, weigh the sheep at the same time, record it. So it's EID's Bluetooth to the um, weigh head and then record that used body weight. So now I've got the body weight of and the um, identity of that animal recorded and I've got a blue dot on there ready for a fleece for a side sample from up in the shearing shed. Righto, so uh, while the shearer's holding the sheep, this is where the EID comes in to its own, so I can walk up somewhere around the shearer. So it prints out its ear tag, um, barcode for that, um, that animal, so that's that animal's individual identification. So then I um, rip that off. And Corey's shearing, so I put it on Corey's board. <laughs> And that way we can um, use the weigh head to match the fleece to the sheep. So, right, eh? so then she's got to do hands off. Okay. And then we'll get that wool sample out, which should be somewhere over here. <laughs> and we're good to go. And then I'll put it in a sample bag with the barcode so that matches that animal to that wool sample. That gives us three bits of data. So we've got micron, body weight, and fleece weight. So those, and those three things together make up an index, and that allows us to rank our hoggets from one through to 500 or however many we year. It doesn't really matter how many we need in each particular year to, to keep our flock maintained. We can select the best from our hoggett flock. So we're making genetic gain every year. And, and I guess putting selection pressure on our U side um, because we do a lot of selection pressure on the ram side, buying with ASBVs, but so we've got selection pressure on both sides now, the U and the ram side. One of the noticeable things when you start recording animals on an individual basis is just how much variability there is within your own flock. So there's a lot of talk within the industry about uh, different bloodlines and you know from property to property, but there's actually 
a massive amount of variability within your own sheep. So within the one mob like this one, there'd be sheep that are 15 micron, but there's also sheep in there that are probably 21, 22. And without um, measuring it, it's hard to manage it, I guess is the message. So we can um, keep those animals that are finer, cut more wool and have heavier body weight and um, push our genetics the way we want them to go, where they hopefully are making more money. If, if you focus on one d um, dimension too much, that things can go down in other areas. So um, we need to be aware of it whenever we're measuring things and, and using, um, using measurement as a selection tool. One unintended consequence is that we've selected for animals that aren't necessarily as fertile because we're choosing body weight and fleece weight. We're tending to be choosing animals that are born as singles and not twins. And so we've actually noticed with all this measuring that our lambing or marking percentage has come down probably 15%. So it started relatively high anyway, it was over 120 and we're probably down to 105 now. So. Um, but I, you know, there's a plan to, to fix that and, and we don't do a lot of preg scanning, but I think we probably, that'll be our next variable to um, add to the, to the index. If we can now record with EID which animals come from a twinning mum, we'll be able to take that variable out and choose animals that have been twins, have more wool, have a higher body weight and have a lower micron. So it sounds like I want it all and that's because I do. I think the, the weighhead is actually the main piece of technology that, that drives the whole um, individual animal recording because the weighhead is, is the computer, it's the data recording device. So the stick readers is fairly flexible as opposed to panel readers because you can walk down a race, you can walk through the shear and board, you can do a lot of different things with the stick reader. And most of them have got pretty good operability on within themselves so you can do plenty of data recording with the stick reader itself. So Stick reader paired to a good way head are the, the two key pieces of tech. Initial investment in the combi clamp came a long time ago. I reckon we've probably had it for 15 years. So when we bought the combi clamp, we initially bought the uh, lead up ramp and the um, clamp itself. After that, we bought the, the down ramp, so and that's got the c capacity to manually draft. One, we got on so well with that, we thought, because we work in three different properties, we thought we need to make this far more mobile and at the time Combi Clamp were making a trailer that everything fitted on, which is registrable um, for down the road. So we bought that. The, I think the total investment for the whole Combi Clamp has been about seventeen or $18,000, which is still, you know, probably half what some of the more um, automatic type um, handlers are. Um, the Combi Clamp, well, it suits us anyway, so. Uh, one of the best bits of technology that we've implemented is the leak detection units. They pay from the cells with the water that we've saved by finding the leaks early and also allows us to, to get away a few extra days in summertime because we know that the sheep have got, uh, got water and it's getting there. So we get a text message each morning with, with the minimum flow and the daily flow on the detection units so, and we've got them on uh, each of the water meters on all our different properties so we, we know what's um, happening all over the place. We'd like to thank Chris, Leanne and the whole Lim family for sharing their technology journey with us here today and for helping put this video together. To find out more about the Red Meat and Wool Growth Program and our various focus farms, go to the Department of Primary Industries and Regions website.